Been around the block. All right, folks, welcome back to the Jimmy O Show. We are episode two of season two now, and we're here with a couple of our newest additions to the wave. We've got Dante Fleming and AJ Hampton, two of our recent transfers. Guys, how we doing? Doing well, doing well. Appreciate Good. you having us. Yeah, love to have you, man. And this is an opportunity for our fans to get to know some of our new guys as they're coming in. Um, before we get started on that, I want to make sure people check out ftwcollective.com. Find out how you can get involved to help our program supporting these student-athletes, well-deserving student-athletes of, of your support. Uh, and also uh, want to highlight our charity of this episode, our charity spotlight will be on Ryan's Giving Tree. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Sandy Ryan's a former walk-on basketball player at Tulane, started his own charity, he does great work in the community, feeding homeless and and sort of you know giving back in, in a way that's, that's really touching and really impressive for somebody who, you know, basically as a college student to be doing that kind of thing and 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 being resourceful to figure out a way to make that happen is is just a really cool thing and we we want to do whatever we can at the the collective to to raise awareness to his group and 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 send people in his direction so guys with that welcome now we were talking before the show this is season two of the jimmy o show season one was great season one i i think played a large part in winning a cotton bowl personally i mean (laughs) And, and they say my position in my profession is, is a lot, you know, uh, causation does not, correlation does not equal causation. But yeah. in this case, we're going to say there's some causation too. <laughs> all right. We had something to do with that somehow. Um, but no, seriously, it, it, as great as last season was, it's time to move on. And I uh, bet you two of the most excited people about what to 2023 has to bring are you two guys, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, before we get too too far, your name, your ears may have been burning, Dante. But I was talking about you with somebody on Saturday morning. Your former quarterback's dad and I were hanging out watching a high school football practice. Uh, uh, Fields, um, I'm forgetting what's his uh, what? Chandler. Chandler Fields. Yeah. Sorry, Chandler's younger brother and my son are in, in eighth grade at Brother Martin High School, and they're they're out there with the varsity for the first time practicing and. He's like, man, y'all got Dante Fleming out, man. He's a good player, blah, blah, blah. He's going, going on and on about you. So you got a, you got a UL fan. We're going to try to convert him to a Greenway fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. That would be nice. Um, and then the other other little tidbit, I, 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 your name actually came up about three weeks ago. I was trying a case in St. John Parish where I went to high school, where you went to high school, where you were born and raised. And uh, – I, you know, I just was, I was trying to look for some support. You, you got what's why dear. This is when a lawyer is picking the jury, and you get to ask the jury questions. And I'm, like, looking at his audience. It's like, this isn't, you know, I didn't go to high school with any of these people, so I'm going to try to try to butter them up. I'm like, now, <laughs> do any of y'all happen to know Dante Fleming and Jarius Monroe, you know? Right. Unfortunately, nobody knew you. But that was all right. That would have got, probably got them disqualified. Right. You know, they probably knew knew East St. John football players, but didn't, yeah. they weren't related to you or anything like that, so. Um, so guys, you've been here since January, right? Yes, sir. How's it been? How's it been so far? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I could go first. I mean, honestly, I mean, I graduated from Northwestern, a uh, grad student coming in. I, mean, I loved everything about Northwestern. But one thing that really struck me here is just the team culture and the atmosphere. That's one thing that's really good and uh, huge here. I mean, and one of the uh, most key factors that kind of stuck out to me was like after practice or even before practice, all the players, we dab handshakes up, you know, say what's up. And, I mean, pump each other up. But it was like, all right, let's work. And that's something we never really did in my old school. Or I'm not sure a lot of other schools do mm-hmm. that. But like the big emphasis on team and just the support was one system that really stuck with me first coming in, which is huge. And shows and next success last year yeah you know I, that's something i noticed too um even when i was playing we had a lot of success and all that but like you know there was some intermingling but for the most part defensive guys hung out with defensive guys you, you really kind of hung out in your position group there was yeah. some crossover among some of the skill guys y'all y- y'all were uh less loyal but i mean all this <laughs> alignment kind of just always stayed together and what i noticed these la- being close to the program you know recently it's like man it's just like it's a brotherhood across 120. You know, Jean Claude was just out here talking about he's a brand new guy. He's talking about all the guys who are taking the time to sort of help him out and making sure he's learned the playbook and all this other stuff. You know, like you don't always get that everywhere. Yeah. And, and to your point, uh, you, you see it here. Now, what did you graduate from in Northwestern? Uh, so, I graduated uh, in 2022. I got my major in communication with a minor in sociology. And then, though, that year after grad school, I did an internship with uh, financial advising, uh, A Team University. It was at the time the running back coach's wife 
Okay. So that was real good. So that's what I did last year. I mean, got a lot of good connects, learned about finance, loved everything about it. Yeah. So it's good. We, uh, we can also have the smartest team in the conference, by the way. But uh, <laughs> so, uh, what are you going to uh, get the, the, with the grad work here? Uh, what? So right now I'm getting my grad, uh, grad school is in sports administration. Okay. So sports studies, possibly a future AD, something like that. Uh, my dad's a head coach right now at University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. So, I mean, I've always been around football and sports. That's Toronto Armstead, right? Uh, wait, who? Armstead went there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So – but, yeah, no, I've been around him my whole life. So, I mean, so I feel like I got a good little sense. But, I mean, I'm very ambitious. I want to do a lot of things. So, I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah, that's cool, man. I mean, well, Chris was just here. Chris is sort of same background, graduated in MassCom and is now in sports manager as well. Y'all, yeah. y'all classes together? Oh, yeah, we have we have a few. I got one with him right now. But I know next semester, well, in the summer, we got two classes. Okay. So, it'll be very exciting. Very good. And, and now, Dante, you, you're a traditional transfer, right? You weren't yes, a grad transfer? No, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, what what what's your sort of um, what are you um, what's your plan in terms of that the academic side of it? My plan is really stay in the sports field, like continuing the coaching. And when I stepped foot on this campus, I felt the brotherhood, everyone because everybody welcomed me with open arms. Mm-hmm. And the most exciting part is that I get to perform back close to my hometown. So that's that's more exciting about it. Everybody get to come to the game, watch, not far away. So. That really plays a big part in it, too. Yeah, I think that's so cool to be able to do. I I know my parents appreciate it. I, I played here. My brother played at Louisiana Monroe. And, man, they, they supported us equally. But that, that drive to the drive to New Orleans from, from – I'm from Paulina. Right. You know, Lutcher. Know that's that. So, the drive to New Orleans is a lot easier than that drive to Monroe. <laughs> uh, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. Now, um, also, you know, by happenstance, Coach Mack, is uh, in our my son. They're sort of in the same baseball program. So I was talking to him at practice. He, you know, he's saying big things about you, Dante. You, you, you ready to step up and take that role here at Tulane? Be be one of the key weapons on this offense. Oh yes, yeah, so I'm ready to step up. Coach Mack is a nice guy, preparing us to be ready on Saturday. So I think we'll be ready for the challenge as a whole group. Yeah, and I, look, I know we're going to run the ball. And we're going to do that, and that's all part of it. And you know, as, as it should be, but. When you lose a guy like Tajay, you don't replace a guy like Tajay. And while we got good, talented guys in that backfield, when you return four offensive linemen, you return a three-year starter quarterback, you're going to toss the ball around a little bit. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel I feel every, all of us as a group got to come together and just play ball. I mean, they, we don't have Tajay Spears anymore, so we all got to step up and be a factor in the offense and make make the defense really intimidated by us. So. Mm-hmm. And um, what, which of the positions are you working at? It, it may be multiple. You kind of inside, outside, mostly outside? Both. Both? Yeah, but mainly I'm going to be an X receiver, as the widest receiver. So, mm-hmm. But mostly both. Yeah, it's only T.O. and Michael Irvin. It's only, <laughs> you know, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty significant position yeah. right there, yeah. you got to be able to get off the line, got to get off that press. You know, you don't, you yeah. don't get to move around as much. Right. you got to beat that one-on-one. And, you know, but you got – you're lean, but you got some strength. You know, right. you, got, you, you, you got a lot of power in there, and and, and can work with that. Uh, go high point a ball for us, and I can't wait to see it. Can't wait yeah. to see it. Um, now, AJ, you know, when I look on the other side of the ball, you know, I, um, I I see a lot of talented guys departing, but also, you know, but there are a lot of talented guys coming back, and and guys coming in. What I was concerned with is how do you replace leadership that guys like Nick Anderson and Dorian Williams and Larry Brooks and Macon Clark, Lummy Young. I mean, those guys were all sort of respected elder statesmen in the locker room. People, they talk, people listen. And I'm told by some of the young guys, like one of the people that has already stepped up to fill the ball, void is you. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. No, yes, sir. Uh, I mean, props to all those guys before me, Nick Anderson, uh, all those guys, Dorian, Lummy. Because, I mean, they set the standard. I mean, and I think it was huge that they set the standard because not only did they set the standard, but they gave an example to the young guys and a lot of those younger players that are stepping up and growing into that role. Because, I mean, the biggest thing has been leaders, bringing people along with you. Uh, so, I mean, coming in, I knew we had some leaders leaving, uh, but my role is uh, not only I wanted to come in in the spring, not only establish myself, but establish myself in the team unit and show people that I'm here, ready to work, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I mean, we're here to get it, get it done. Like mm-hmm. I said, it's a new season, and respectfully, you got to do, th- do the right things right if you want to be a leader. And, I mean, that's kind of what I did, try to bring people along with me, but – for yeah. the most part. And, and some people are willing to follow. That's, that's, a, that's a credit to you. Um, 
you know, and I guess where are you sort of working? I mean, you, you have experience as a cornerback, but I guess, you know, you have the ability to play safe. You have the ability to play nickel. What, what's what, Where are you kind of primarily working right now? Oh, yeah, no, uh, primarily I'm working at corner. Uh, mm -hmm. I play I play to the field and boundary. And then I even work a little bit inside, too. I played inside a little bit at uh, Northwestern, but for mostly I played a lot on the outside. I played a lot of field corner. You know, got to be able to stop those post routes and field digs <laughs> right. and stuff like that. But no, nah, got, they got me working at primar primarily corner, but I think that's just due to me really being a student of the game and being able to learn the playbook. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm willing to do whatever needs to be done. And I feel like that, I mean, it's respect to the coaches. And that's, I mean, it's also uh, props to them too, because they're putting me in that position and they're helping me learn the playbook, which coming in over spring, I mean, it's, it's real quick, but yeah. I mean, like I said, I got to commit to it. So. Yeah, you know, it's a, um, it's the hardest position, I think, to play these days. I mean, when you look at everything that, um, you know, quarterback's hard too, but like you, you know, there's so much that's an advantage to the offense. No offense, Dante, but but you know, with um, the rules as they are, the RPO game, you know, is pretty unfair. Very dangerous. It, it's pretty unfair <laughs> to defensive backs, and a lot of times, you know, you're left with you got to commit so many resources to stopping a run or at least the threat of the run. Like yeah. you're often left one on one out there. Oh yeah, it's very talented. You Absolutely. know, fast guys that can jump high and. Got to have a short memory, I guess. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I feel like that's huge. I mean, just coming from Northwestern, a lot of experience. I played against those guys, like Ohio State, played against Gary Wilson, played against Marvin Harrison this year. <laughs> I mean, I played against a lot of guys at, at Michigan. They've had good wide receivers. Michigan State, first game of the season. Jaden Reed, he just got drafted to the Packers. Right. So, I mean, I've gotten a lot of experience, but that's just through time and just through a little bit of trials and tribulations, just learning the game through uh, my elders before me. I got a lot of good friends, got a little – got good knowledge and then my father's also a coach so i mean i, that, that, I, got, I got it all working to my my benefit so i got the tools yeah just got to use them yeah no doubt and and you know uh coach fitz, fitz and and northwest are known for their defense and i mean northwest has been a, a solid you know capable program for many years now but you know i one of the first people i've hung out with in a law profession he and i gravitated gravitated each other's guy joe joe was a cornerback at northwestern back in like he was older than me but he, like in a early 80s or something yeah and they were really bad back then he's like man he's they're, like, they're trying to get him to the ivy league back then that's yeah, what i used look, to hear yeah i mean he's like look uh one weekend I'm, is anthony carter across from me another week is you know al toon i mean these are all guys who were borderline hall of famers oh yeah NFL. and it's like he's like the only thing that stopped him was the fact that big 10 teams didn't didn't throw the ball yeah. more than 10 times a game <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely if they would have go for 300 on me they would have yeah um, I, yeah uh, yeah that's good i was yeah i say that's the one thing i liked about northwestern just ha playing against a lot of top tier guys like those two years we went to the big 10 west played justin fields and then the year before that uh we played uh, what was the quarterback they had before that's back when they had like um uh dang i can't remember well, yeah, had, I, thought, um, I thought i'm getting old <laughs> well, yeah, it would have been after Cardell, right? Uh, yep. JT Barrett. Yep, that's who it was. Yeah, yeah, JT yeah. Barrett. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, oh yeah, no, I got a lot of good good experience, but loved yeah. it. Yeah, I mean those guys are a juggernaut, man. I mean they they they're up there recruiting like Alabama and Georgia, except you know, oh yeah, in, in a different league. And they even had Jamison Williams that one year, right before he went to Alabama. <laughs> yeah. See, people forget about that. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, he was having a hard time getting on the field at Ohio State, and then, yeah, know, yeah, he was on that field in that championship game. And he goes wins a Belichick, you know? <laughs> yes, um, sir. No, it's crazy. I mean, it it, it just it's, it's it's amazing to get that opportunity to compete like that, and and you know, kind of. If you're able to withstand an opportunity, even if you take a lick here and there, it, it, it grows a person, grows a player. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I, you know, Dante, I was thinking about that receiver room y'all had, man. I'm, 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 I try not to watch it, but I'll, uh, you know, Bradley and, and his contingent, our producer, you know, his big LSU guy, they, they keep us up to date. I mean, Kyron Lacey's out there blowing up their spring game. You know, Michael Jefferson's out there. You know, uh, I don't know if he got drafted, but he signed with somebody. Uh, uh, you know, had you. I mean, y'all had y'all had a stable of some some pretty good receivers there at uh, ULL. What, why didn't they throw that more? I mean, it was it was all in the coaches hand. We couldn't do nothing about yeah, it but just you, play. You don't call them, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's kind of a run focused game for a for a for a receiver room like that. But you know, that's their call. I mean, we had we had the talent. I just it just wasn't our call. We just had to go out and execute what the coaches call was calling. So. Yeah, th th there's no doubt about that, and and you know it's really impressive what they've done there. You know when I, look when I 1997 we played them, I think we beat them like 56 nothing. You know beat them 70 oh something goodness. to 20 Dang. and 98 and like, but they got serious, man. I mean they look they they developed a heck of a program and, right. and done a good job there, and uh, we're lucky to have you. So 
I don't want you to be too modest here, but Mac was trying to tell me, I was trying to get straight. He was telling me in terms of miles an hour and some of the speed we got in the room. And and I hear, you know, I was like, yeah, man, coach, you know, Jaquan can move and Keys can move. He's like, yeah, they can. I mean, they, they you know, starting receivers and returners for a Cotton Bowl <laughs> champion. But he's like, but they really kind of like, you know, fourth or fifth or so in uh, terms of, of get up and go, and I hear you might you might have a, might have them licked a little bit there, Dante. Twenty two point four miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's moving, my guy. I mean, they, they fast too. Keys and Quan, they, they some fast guys. Yeah. So. I mean, Quan does have like the Cotton Bowl record for longest yeah. reception, uh-huh. and a lot of that had to do with Keys uh, blocking for him for about right. forty yards yeah. down the field. That was impressive. Great, but uh, great play. You know, now when you get back to the receiving room, I want you to ask Keys about that time he played. Uh, Jimmy O in Papa shot at the main event at the Cotton Bowl. It didn't go too well for Keys. <laughs> I'm <gonna ask. laughs> you know, I was feeling good about myself, and I think it was Corey Plack show, stepped up and beat me by about 20, but I got Oof. Keys. I got Keys good. I was, I, I was hot. I was hot. All right, Platt. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so, man, so look, um, just sort of y'all's time around, like, um, you know, y'all don't have the perspective of kind of long-term growth, but just – Say from the start of spring to the end of spring, who are some guys that you saw maybe in your position group or at a position group you watched closely like you're like, man, that guy really came on over the course of those three weeks? Other teammates. Um, so I wouldn't even really say anybody came on because I feel like there's a lot of good talent already on the team. It's just uh, kind of, you know, growing as a player, uh, realizing certain, like, schemes down the distance, which is huge. But I feel like as in DB room, at, personally, I mean – Lance Robinson, you know, he had a good spring ball coming back, obviously. Uh, Jarius Monroe had a good spring ball. That's a good young guys coming back, too. Uh, Ray, Ray Sean Pleasant. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, we got a lot of a lot of great talent. And then even in safety room, like, I just really admire how they get after it. My boy DJ Douglas. Uh, I mean, I can go on. Darius Swanson, that's my, my new roommate. I mean, just the, really just the focus and just the willingness to work. That's one thing I really noticed about, like, the defense in general. Even the linebacks I pay attention to, like Tyler Grubb, like I said, Corey Platt. Platt. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's really it's really a great team to be a part of, and I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, you know, one, one, and, and I'll cover that, and I'll come to your to your choice, give you a little bit more time to think. You know, one of the key parts of the season last year, and, y'all, you know, y- y'all may have seen the tape or something on it, is, like, that Kansas State game they went up there, you know, you're not expecting to be that hot. You're from New Orleans. It was really hot. And – we had a time in that game where um, Nick, Dorian, and Larry Brooks were all in the locker room getting IVs. And, you know, Zeus Machado and Bailey uh, Despaini stepped up with mm-hmm. two of the biggest plays in the game, you know. And it's like sort of like next man up stuff. and yeah. just. But you speak to the talent. I mean, that's something that Tulane historically hasn't had. That's, that's the big difference is we might have had – you know, nine, ten starters on each side of the ball were pretty good college football players, competitive with their level, but we didn't have – it went – it was paper thin, you know, and you didn't have the next guy behind him. Now you look, it's like, man, it's a stud, 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 stud everywhere. And like you said, y'all are talking about, everybody okay. being bought in, you know, if everybody's sort of on the same page and everybody's got physical talent, good things happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how about you, uh, uh, Dante? Who are some of the guys that you sort of noticed – come on or that you were impressed with, I guess, um, in the receiver room or tight end room or whatever? Really, just like what AJ was saying, I mean, the whole receiver room, I feel like everybody ready to play. One man go down, yeah. next man up. So we just go handle business. So I feel like everybody at practice, give it their all. We all compete to the best of our ability. So I feel like this receiver room will be the best receiver room in the AAC. Yeah. And Coach Fritz, uh, Coach Fritz also said, this is one of the fastest group we ever had. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we're going to be big threats to a lot of teams we play. Oh, I think so. Uh, uh, the speed is is really impressive. There's no doubt. And and But it's one that, you know, it's ball skills, everything else. I mean, a guy like Braz, I mean, you know, he's huge, but the kid, the kid can fly. Right. You know, he's just scratching the surface of what he can be. And, uh-huh. you know, you got some of the seasoned guys who are more developed. You got a guy like you who's kind of already proven yourself at the college level, getting right. an opportunity for big exposure. Um. But you know what the real thing is you gotta you you gotta you got a really important responsibility. You you've been around J Bo for a long time. Right. You know how to deal with J Bo. You got any tips for uh, AJ over here being uh, <laughs> up close and personal with our guy J Bo? He's one of a kind. I mean J Bo J Bo gonna be J Bo. He gonna talk his stuff <laughs> at practice, but at the end of the day we all family. I mean yep. 
we all got to make each other better. That's either talking trash. We got to make the next person on the side of us better. So, oh, there's no doubt. You know, I tell people, you know, I, I, I when people are talking to us about, you know, different opportunities, I was like, man, you go talk to that guy, Jabo. He mean, he he's gonna be a TV star one day. Uh, oh he, yeah. He, the guy's got personality for miles. But you know, <laughs> look, heart of gold. Everything. Uh, he's just a genuinely nice kid, but. He's got a lot of personality. It's yeah. about J- it. J-Bo go talk. J-Bo come, up from, <laughs> J-Bo come from a family that's, that's always talk. Yeah. Hey, his uncle, we'll be at our uh, high school game. He'll be the loudest one to stand. <laughs> you can hear him. Yeah. Loudest one to stand. You and him. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Uh, River Parish ball, man. You know, that was a great run for River Parish last year. Were you ready to bring in some of those Deshran guys coming in this year? We got, uh, I think, three of them coming in. Two of them in the defensive back room, AJ. Did you get to beat uh, Ja Eugene and... And Adams, and I guess we got Landry's uh, uh, one of the offensive linemen coming in. But um, I think I may have seen him at practice. I don't think I really met him, though. Yeah, uh, because y'all wouldn't overlap. You were transferring in as they were being recruited. So. Exactly, yeah. So, for the most part, I was just trying to put my head down to work, you know, focus a little bit. Yeah, but, I, nah, I'll definitely be ready to meet them, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and I, I played against Jai, uh, Eugene in high school. He played quarterback. He's an athlete. Yeah. He's good play. He's good play. He's, he, he, and he comes from a good family because his cousin – his first cousin once removed, his dad's first cousin works for me. And she's fantastic, JC. Yeah. And uh, I love her to death. She's so, so sweet. She's super smart and all this. And uh, I think I think the story goes she used to help Macon's cousin or somebody uh, make sure, he, you know, he passes classes. And, and uh, But anyway, J- JC's fantastic. But she loves Ja uh, dearly. So if, if JC vouchers, vouches for Ja, then – I'm going to take that. So he's, J- Jag will be a good player for us. I mean, when I played against him, he was only a freshman in high school playing quarterback. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they needed him, so he stepped up to that role and took him to the state championship. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, and then uh, so that was Deshran. And, you know, um, my guys at St. Charles, you know, did it again. We got Mandel Eugene representing the comments in, on, on the squad. You know, well, we got to get those. We got to get some of our Lutcher guys in, too. So. We're gonna send you back there. We're gonna you gotta do some recruiting at East St. John. You gotta do some recruiting at, at Lutcher, get some of those guys over to the Greenway. Oh, definitely. You can handle that for us? I guess I can. <laughs> All right, good deal. All right, good. Well guys, um, you know, just look, um, I hope this is the first of many interviews with you guys. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I really look forward to our season. You know, we have player of the week interviews all throughout the season and we bring you guys in. I think both of y'all are gonna win some of those awards oh, over yeah. the course of the season and Look forward to having you more often on Jimmy O Show. Oh, absolutely. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you once again. You got it, man. I appreciate y'all being here. Uh, and, folks, that'll do it for the Jimmy O Show. Once again, check out the website, ftwcollective.com. Find out more about our NIL Collective and what you can do uh, to support us. And until next time, roll wave.